I don't know about you, but I'm dying to unwrap these big paintings. I uh, haven't seen them for quite a while. They've been stored for oh, six years maybe. And then I really haven't seen them on a wall for a long time. So I'm going to do that. I've got a knife here to help me. Make sure I don't cut the canvas. Um, and yeah, so I've got, this is the back of the painting. And you sort of see I've got it's one, two, three, and there's a fourth one behind here. So I'll only pack, unpack one today, and you hang around, you might see the next video being unpacked at some point. But uh, I don't know what it is about unpacking, but obviously people on YouTube and that will like to see it happen. But what it does mean is you get to see these paintings in their real size. Yeah, you can probably find them on my website, in fact, I know you can. Um, but you will not see the size on a website. I think it's a really important thing that, that, that size uh, can really determine how you approach your work. Now, I'm in a small house here. I don't have really big walls, but we've got a wall we decided we'll put this one on. I'll be careful I, I don't go putting my knife where the canvas is. One reason why I'm working on the back first. Yeah, I'm not sure what's this here. Excuse me while I duck in behind. I'll oh, see, see what I've got. I've got a bit of no, no, tapes there. Make sure I've got a few things. Nice thing about packing tape, you just have to put a knife in the tape and it just splits. That's also the bad thing about packing tape. Okay, I think that's that side. Now, first thing about this painting, this is actually the first major brush painting I ever did. So it's quite an old painting now. Um, I've been painting for a long time, and uh, so I'll probably tell you a little bit of the story of this painting as I unpack it. Um, and. I don't know, maybe it was silliness of use, but I thought, I want to do a big painting. Yeah, I wasn't happy just to do a small painting, see me. Should have done a bit smaller painting than this one for my first big brush painting, but hey, I was confident young man, it was all right. It worked out okay, so I'm happy. Uh, it did take about a year and a half to paint, um, but unlike my recent paintings, mm -hmm. Um, this painting was not painted on location. I, I, um, I'll tell you about that location actually, but I, I painted this in, in the studio. A lot of the painting at night, looking for the cricket. Okay. Problem here, to undo this bit. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. And... Canvas. So, now, I was living basically in the desert of Australia. Not quite in the centre of Australia, but pretty close. I'm right on the edge of um, New South Wales and South Australia. Right near Mildura, but Mildura is a good city, so that was okay. Uh, okay. I've wrapped this up in some sort of fridge. So, I'm not sure, I think I'm going to have to cut. The box is a pretty big one, I'm not sure what was in it, but... Life's a bit blunt, but that's probably a good thing. I'm nowhere near the canvas here, but I've got to make sure I don't go and cut the canvas behind me. That'd be bad. So I was out, my first year of teaching actually, I was out in the desert, a place called Denton. And frankly, I was bored as. Very lonely at one level. 
Ha! Didn't see you show anything to you, did I? Um, very lonely at one level, and I and I had nothing to do much, and I hadn't made friends yet so much. I had I you know been been teaching there for a little while, but um, I didn't know quite you know needed to get out and do something. I probably needed to get out and paint and do some art. Oh, that's the front. Okay, so. Oh well, I guess what I can do is just go look around in the, you know, for a ride in the car and see if there's anything to see. And I, I drove the car down a road and I got to a place called Fletcher's Lake. And uh, it's a it's a lake, but it's a salt pan. So unless there's a lot of water, I've never seen really much water in it. And um, but it's an amazing place, and I. I I discovered this place maybe the trip before and uh, so I thought I'll go for a drive out there and I was driving out and I saw the trees that make up this painting. Now at this point in time, as if you know me at all and see my Instagram etc or my Facebook my website russellmccain.art you'll know that I paint trees pretty exclusively and well this is the painting that's responsible for that. Because uh, I went out there and it was a hot day and um, we're talking Australia desert so we're probably talking 35 degrees uh, C and um, I'm sitting down at the desert and, and you know, when you're in Australia you find the shade of a tree. Now I saw this bunch of Mallee root boxes, Mallee boxes Box trees, not only box trees have lovely mountain roots, they're beautiful too. Uh, but many box trees off the road about you know, 50 metres or so, 100 metres. So I went over to stand under the shade of the tree to have a look at these beautiful trees. That they, they weren't very big, they were probably, you know, um, in, in world sizes, they were quite small. In fact, they're probably only. 15 metres high, maybe 10 metres high, not even more, probably no less than 10. And, but they were shady and they had these most amazing trucks. So, um, here I was, painting these things. I thought, well, I wasn't painting, sorry. I, 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 I got there to where they were and I thought, wow, um, these, these would make a really good painting. Uh, they're actually very old trees, these ones. So they're, they've been in the desert a while. So I'm just going to have to turn this in now. They came out, that's good, nothing stuck. Let me just move it around. Okay, I'm lucky. for the moment so I can take off the, 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 the patching. So I sat under these trees and looked and I thought wow that'd make a great painting. So I did some drawing and I thought I've got to come back and paint that. And so I came back and had another look another another day not too long past. I thought okay where I was working I had access to a wood room I'll make myself a canvas and, and um, that's where I got a bit ambitious. This thing's four foot by five foot. Um, the problem with four foot by five foot, you can't carry it in a normal car. It's a little bit big for a car, or a station wagon for that matter. So, it caused me problems all through the years. So anyway, yeah, I got out there and I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll. Um, so I did some drawings and I came home. I stretched up this canvas, made the canvas in the woodwork room at the school I was in, and. Uh, took the canvas to my flat and started painting on it. Um, so I was working on this canvas for a while. I think I love bubble wrap. Not, not popping. Ah, there's one. It's a really fine bubble wrap. So I hope the bubble wrap hasn't stuck to the painting. That's the biggest risk that that happened in the past. I think it's been under wraps for a while. So, so I got this 
this um that's why I'm doing it from this side because I don't want the knife on the other side just in case I slip. And uh oh this is nice. So yeah, started painting this I had it in my flat and I'd sit up and paint in the middle of the night sometimes. I loved it when the cricket was on in England. You put the radio on, listen to the cricket and paint. That was really nice. Uh, looking okay, I think. Put that one there for the moment and swing it around. So I can get the other side. Now this is a horizontal painting, so when I've finished unwrapping it, you'll have to see. You'll have to hold it sideways for you so you can have a see. And and maybe I'll have to just do another reshoot with something so I can show you properly when I get it done. Um, but, so I'm painting away this for, for, for a good year. In fact, such a good year that a year and a half because at the end of two years time um, moved, I moved into a teacher's flat. Well, no, I actually got married. So I married, married my darling, who I'd met while at the college, and uh, she didn't live where I lived. And I, I had a flatmate. The flatmate was a really lovely guy, and uh, he 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 was a wine buff and had lovely wine tastings. It was really good to have him as a friend. <laughs> and uh, he had we had a teachers' flats had been built in the town, so we had these lovely big modern places that we could rent. And I shared this teachers' flat with. With, um, with Clinton for a while and uh, then I got married so I left but on the teacher's flat he had this double story like mezzanine floor looking not quite double story but this big wall I thought that'd be a great place to put this and Clinton was really keen uh, so he decided that we decided that yeah we'll have a have a grand opening and uh, I'll have to turn this around the other way to show you the part of this story of why this is important. I actually don't have this paint, this painting's never sold and there's a reason for it. I didn't have it up for sale um, because of this story. Hold on, let me get that out of the way. So, we decided to have a grand opening. Bought all the staff and friends. We had a wine tasting opening, which was fantastic. All these beautiful bottles of wine lined up we were going to taste as well. And, and I was going to put this up on the wall, and I said to, said to my mate, look, I'll pop around after school and hang it up on the wall. We'll put a sheet over the top and we'll have the big reveal, pull the sheet down. That was all very good. That was, that was nice. Well, we thought that was nice. And uh, so I got out there and I... I came after school before the big grand opening. Woo! Look at that bubble wrap. Someone would have joy with that. It's a very big sheep. Not sure how I managed to get hold of them that size. And um, so anyhow, come the night of the opening, I go hang it up on the wall and I go home. And um, Clinton comes up to me and he goes, um, Russell, before, before the, just before the opening, he said, Russell, I've got bad news to tell you. I said, no, oh, what's that? He said, um, I've ripped your canvas, I've ripped the painting. And I looked at him and I said, I, I said, oh, don't worry, it's fine. It was a bit of a joke at this guy. And we'd already played a practical joke on me with this canvas. But, as you can see here, there's a patch. <laughs> he did rip the canvas. It had fallen on the TV and it had actually gone about that long. It was a nice rip right along. And uh, I hung it up and did all that. Did that. He might have actually told me when I was putting the canvas on it, the, the thing on the wall. I said, don't worry, don't worry about it. Because I didn't believe it. I didn't think about it. I didn't see it. I was putting the wires on and everything and I didn't notice that it had been ripped. And anyhow, we're in the middle of this big function and we'd had the grand opening and everything else and Clinton goes up to my wife and says, oh, 
Are you sure Russell's not really upset about the painting? And she goes, oh. Because I didn't, they probably didn't even let her know that it had been ripped, I don't know. And I said, oh, okay. And, and so she came up to me and, and she said, um, <laughs> Clinton's really worried that you're upset and you haven't said anything about him having ripped the painting. And I stopped and I looked and said, you mean he did rip it? And uh, he had. Um, uh, it was easy enough to repair when you get around the other side, you can't see where the repair is. But uh, because it was ripped like this, I thought, no, I can't sell it, so I kept it. And that was really good. Um, in those days, I painted on straight canvas. That's fine. Uh, nowadays I paint on linen, quite a big piece of canvas on this. So anyhow, so here we are. Now I've got to do something here. So oops, make sure I don't rip and put another rib in the canvas. We all know what happens when you do that, don't we? Let me just put this down. So I can stand on it. It's like a mess in here. This ain't a big room. If I put that on there, I might be able to rest the painting on that, that canvas as I do that. So let me think. So there we are. So we're ready for the big reveal. Um, oh, heavy. Uh, I made my frame pretty solid. Uh, anyhow, here we go. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. There we are. These are the Mallee boxes. And a uh, little box Mallee. Wow, look at that. There's some cracking of the paint in here. It's just age. I don't have many paintings do that these days, but early, a little bit of that. As I said, this is, well, I, we've, been, we've been married for, for 42 years or 41 years. So this is 40, 41. 40, 41 years old. But the uh, cut was just down here in this area. This is there. Yep. And uh, repaired, and you can't see it from the front, that's fine. Uh, canvases are fairly tough things, and uh, oil paint is really helpful for that. Uh, fairly flexible. Um, this fellow in here needs a uh, bit of a varnish now. It has had one in the past, so it's not too bad a condition for, for matness. Um, this painting, though, is uh, became my iconic trees. Now, I call this painting figures, figures because there's three of them in landscape. Now, figures in landscape has got, um, be, it's become an iconic, because for me, these trees are populating the landscape. You can see there's a few back here and back there, but they're sparse. But people don't live in the Australian outback very much. You know, we have a few homesteads and, and, and dams and things where people congregate around that they've made. But generally speaking, uh, for us white Anglo-Saxon colonisers of this place, this is foreign country. Once upon a time, this actually used to be farmland of kangaroo grasses that provided seed for people. And there were a lot of people who lived in this region uh, from the First Nations people who, um, who, you know, actually had a subsistence farm system running on this place of, of grain. We didn't know that because there was no fences, so we didn't recognise that that stuff was what uh, they were using to make breads and things. But um, here... These, these are figures and we're sitting in here and this is where I'm having my lunch. And I'm looking at this and it reminded me of a really important and classic painting. And the painting is Dejeuner sur le Herbe by Manet. Now Manet was the first of the Impressionist space. Uh, he was sort of bridged the gap between the Monet, uh, who's the other M-word artist at the time, who was a real strong Impressionist, and, and Manet was the father of that, a big influence on Monet, and he sort of bridged the cap, gap between the realists and the social realists of the time, Millet and, and people like that. And um, he painted this painting which shocked the world because it was of a couple of gentlemen 
reclining at lunch and just a normal girl having lunch with them who's fully nude. In the background there's this like a classical nymph and she's got clothes on but the one sitting there with them is just everything showing. And that was really shocking because you could paint nudes so long as they were allegorical and they were Romans and, and Greeks and you could, you could get away with it and tintalise the, the, um, the, the men folk who bought the paintings. But mayonnaise was like <clears throat> right there. So these figures actually are sort of sitting and standing in almost the same positions um, of, of, of this famous painting. So I named it after that De Genus de la Herde, which is the name of a French painting, uh, but figures in landscape number one because it's the first one I did. And, and this actually determined what I, I did for my figures. Uh, paintings. This painting here was that I looked for trees that had a sculptural presence that was like a human, like a being, like a person, because these populate this landscape. And so I was lonely, I, I went and talked to the trees, um, I was lonely in that I hadn't formed good friendships yet and I'd, I'd come from a really intense college and a lot of collegiate activity to a desert and uh, and I learnt to make, I was born in the desert, so it wasn't a hard transition. I didn't mind the desert, I loved it. But, um, so I thought, yeah, we're in Australia, we sit under trees. So that's why the trees are in front, because Australian landscape, even up to this time, was about that iconic Hans Heysen tree in the background that you, you see, and it's just a decorative feature. They weren't the subject so much. Uh, Hans Eisen made the tree the subject, but it was a heroic tree. It was a, it was a magnificent tree. It was there and it would have the sheep and the scale and all that. Well, these trees were just like plomped right in the landscape. People like Manet plomped his nude. And, um, and, and there it was. Uh, and I'm looking through, and in Australia, we view the landscape through trees, from underneath them not out from them. And if we were, if I was hiking through there, walking through here, this is where I'd stop for lunch. And this is where I'd sit and contemplate. This is where I'd boil a billy. This is where I would take some relief from the heat. And so here we are, the first of the paintings, a little bit more around the side there. Figures in landscape number one, Deja Nurse of a Herb, luncheon on the grass. <laughs> That's sort of ironic, isn't it? Because there ain't much grass, a bit of, um, Salt bush and a, a little bit of spindly. It's not, it's not actually spin effects in this location, but yeah, dried grass that's managed to grow up amongst the roots. But the roots actually suck the water out, so the grass tends not to grow un, under the trees in this area. It tends to be fairly barren. Um, and if there were sheep grazing, you'd find the sheep under these too. But for a sense of scale, you know, if I was standing. I'm probably standing about this high. So, um, there we go. Dejeuner sur le, le herb à la Russell McCain. More information, um, I don't have this on my website because it's not up for sale. Um, eventually I'll do a history section of my website and have significant paintings. But if you have a look at my blog, I have a blog where I tell a story and I tell the story of how I started painting and uh, that's in this paintings in there and I think you'll see I've actually put a photograph of this painting in that particular block because it's so critical and central to my whole work for the next 45 years.